I'm Zach with Josh's Frogs, and today we're here to talk about one of my favorite gecko species, Felsuma clemeri, or for you non-Latin speakers, the neon-headed day gecko. So one of the smaller species of geckos, about four, four and a half inches long from Madagascar. I've actually got an adult here to show off. That's a full-grown animal. And also wanted to show off that I'm keeping them in a deli cup, because like most day geckos, they're really quick. Um, they can drop their tail when threatened, and they also have really, really fragile skin. So with these guys, it's really a good idea if you're looking for a pet that you want to enjoy and leave in its tank, day geckos may be the right pet for you. If you're looking for something to hang out on your shoulder or hold occasionally, probably stay away from day geckos. They won't appreciate you and you won't appreciate them. Um, we're gonna go through just some basic care needs. Um, this is a good sized tank for up to one adult. Um, you know, we do breeder pairs in here um, at home, probably give them a little bit more space. Um, this is a 12 by 12 by 18 terrarium and 18 by 18 by 24 would be even better. Um, this is what I would consider minimum size for this species. And we're gonna set it up bioactively. So what that means is we're gonna use our, our special tropical bio bedding substrate, some live plants, and some microfauna, springtails and isopods to help keep everything clean for us in this gecko. So we're gonna rip through this incredibly tough, thick plastic bag. And we've already taken this tank and we've already cleaned it out. So it's nice and fresh and ready to go. I'm gonna dump the substrate out. When you receive the substrate, it may not be mixed together. So we're gonna spread out that substrate. We're gonna mix it by hand. Maybe a little dusty, so probably don't get your face too close in there. And then for this case, since it's a demo, I'm not gonna do this, but generally you'd wanna wet it down really, really well. You wanna wet it down to the point where when you squeeze it, water doesn't come out, but it sticks together. You can see it's crumbly just cause it's dry. And after you get that in there, you can put in your hardscape and then your plants. So Felsuma clemeri are native to bamboo forests in Madagascar. So it's good to have bamboo in their habitat. It's hard, it's smooth. It's mold resistant. Um, our kit comes with two different sizes, which are great for them. You can set that up. Generally, you could use a little bit longer pieces of this. I just had some smaller ones sitting around. You can run them vertically, horizontally, and they're gonna be a lot of great hiding and basking areas for these guys. You wanna provide, especially if you have more than one animal in there, you wanna provide them a lot of different options for hiding and basking. And almost like you're giving them a little bit of a jungle gym to climb around on. And then in addition, of course, you have your plants. One of our favorite day gecko plants is Sansevieria, mother-in-law's tongue, snake plant. Nice, broad, um, sturdy leaves. They really like to hang out on here. And one of the favorite places for these guys to lay their eggs is actually down in the crown of the plant too. So remove most of the substrate, rinse her off. You can put that right into the substrate. And your tank, this is actually a fairly, um, fairly drought tolerant plant, but it actually does pretty well in the humid confines of this too. Um, I've even had some luck even growing it in a dart frog tank before. Then we're also gonna go with pothos, just your common vining, great for cover. And these day geckos are small enough to actually support themselves completely on this guy. And just because we got some exceptionally large plants this time, we're gonna leave this other guy out. You got yourself a nice pretty house plant too, just cause it's already so big. And it's time to add microfauna. So we've got two types of microfauna. We've got your isopods, which these are basically fancy pill bugs that are special varieties that'll live and thrive in vivarium conditions. These are what are called a dwarf white. You'll have to take my word for it, but there's one right there. They're about an eighth of an inch long, full grown or so. And so you can chunk those guys in there and very gently mix them with the soil or just kind of sprinkle them over the top. Then the same with the springtails. Here's an eight ounce cup of dirt full of springtails. They're even tinier, about a 16th of an inch. Um, neither of these will really serve as a food source for your gecko. Although um, I've had small day geckos um, munch on isopods before, but they're really good cleanup crews. So that you can just dump them in there. They're gonna live down in the bottom substrate of the tank and they will eat any waste, um, any uneaten food that falls down there, dead crickets, things of that nature. Um, not gonna hurt any of your animals. Keep in mind day geckos, they're arboreal. They live off the ground. They're gonna do a lot of pooping on the sides of your tank. So, you know, you're still gonna to have to clean that. It's not like a, a, a end all be all for maintenance or anything. Um, then that's basically it. You would take this tank, you'd soak it down. You'd spray it really well. Make sure you monitor temperature and humidity with a good digital one. You don't want one of those analog ones. They're not very accurate. Um, this combometer from Exoterra is a great one. Uh, most major brands have similar ones too. You're looking for a humidity of about 60 to 70% right after you mist. That can drop down as low as 50%. It's gonna be a little more humid at the bottom, but we like to aim for about 60, 65, 70%. Um, temperatures, um, 
Low to mid 70s towards the bottom, up to the mid 80s or so towards the top. Um, ideally, we'd have some bamboo structures across here. For lighting, we found in these size tanks, you can actually use a 26 watt UV bulb, just a tropical, such as the UVB 100 from Exoterra. And in one of these compact tops up here, it's gonna be provide UV and it does produce a little bit of waste heat, which is generally enough to get that temperature up high enough to where you want it. Um, you know, ideally the geckos are gonna be able to sit down here and get to the low to mid eighties or so to warm up. Um, as far as feeding these guys, um, they can eat a variety of foods. You can feed some of the day gecko or even crested gecko prepared diets. Um, Pangea, um, Insects Complete is a great powder diet you can add water to. Um, a couple times a week, just use a little feeding dish. It sticks right to the side of the tank and it's pretty handy. It's a good way to provide water too. Um, crickets, um, when they're smaller, Heidi Eye fruit flies can work pretty well. Um, even adults will eat these occasionally. They're just not a lot of meat to them. And then for adults, we really like quarter inch crickets. Um, you know, dusted with a good vitamin and mineral supplement. Um, Rapashi Calcium Plus is a good one for that. So generally you'd feed, you'd feed their, um, the Pangea, you know, a couple times a week is fine. And then um, bugs two to three times a week. Um, that tends to keep those guys happy. Um, this type of setup, like I said, would be fine for a couple juveniles growing out. Um, one adult would be fine. I would consider it bare minimum for a pair. Um, consider something a little bit bigger. And with proper care, these guys can easily live 10 plus years and be a really cool little you know, companion lizard for you. Um, once again, when you get them, this is an adult like we saw before. Generally, you're going to, when you receive them, you're gonna be receiving babies. A little bit older, a little bit larger than these guys. So you can see, they start out pretty tiny little guys. Um, you know, when you'll receive them, they're generally about, a, about an inch or so larger than these. Great little geckos, especially if you're looking for a day gecko um, that doesn't need a lot of room. Um, these guys used to be fairly hard to find. Um, they're becoming more and more common. Um, we produce a couple hundred a year here at Josh's Frogs and routinely have them available on the website, so make sure you check them out. Um, you know, uh, make sure you check out, we have other care sheets, blogs available on our website. Um, so, as well as this, this is our small day gecko care kit. Um, that has all the instructions and stuff needed to set it up and get you started. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible, so we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help, just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.